What's the deal? I go by the name of Papa Egg Soul, man. Shout out to Fuse Media. Let's get it. Yeah, see it already in my mind. Whoa, I think that cops outside my door. I shoot, I shoot, I score. What's up with it, y'all? For those that don't know, man, my name Top Shelf Jock, man. I'm standing with another LA artist, man. Go by the name Papa XO, man. You already know, man. We finna kick this interview off, man. Let's uh, let's kick it off with the name, man. Let us know uh, how you get the name Papa XO. Um, Papa, that's just a childhood name. You feel me? XO came from basically my section. You feel me? I grew up in the hundreds, and then it, it's, it's Roman numeral for 100. You feel me? And I pride myself on keeping the 100. So that's where the name come from. Papa XO, Papa 100. You know what I'm saying? Easy smooth. Off top, off top. I like that. Okay, that's a little bit of info I didn't even know. Okay, for sure. So uh, how long you been doing music? Oh uh, man. Believe it or not, I only been doing music for probably about probably just now touching like like a year and a half. You feel me? Um, my my homeboy Speedy, uh, his obituary on the wall. You feel me? Uh, he he was he was really he was doing music crazy. You feel me? He was doing 30k, 40k when he was dropping songs and shit. So he passed away in um, in June June 2014 and shit. So. Right prior to his death, he was just telling me like, man, you, you really need to start pushing this music shit with me because I was I was drunk one day on some freestyle shit and I guess I was going to crazy I was going crazy to him. You feel me? And me, I'm just fucking around like I ain't never thought about doing music and none of that shit. So, uh, long story short, man, basically he was just telling me like you need to start doing music and uh, like two days before he got killed, I told him like, hey, look, bro, let's really do this shit. Like let's really push this music. I think we can make something happen. And then my homie got killed. You feel me? My best friend actually. And shit, I just, I've been going crazy ever since, you feel me? I do this shit for him, you know? Yeah, yeah, that's hella dope, man. Yeah, for just a year, hell, you got hella talent, man. Keep that shit going. Keep that shit cracking, bro, yeah. And rest in peace, Speedy, too, man. Let's go ahead, yeah. Rest in peace, man. So, um, you know, I, I know you got a new project coming out, Stick to the Script. Um, you know, let us know what we can expect from that, what we got going on there. Uh, Stick to the Script, you really gonna have a lot of street shit going on. But not street to where motherfuckers gonna be like, oh, he just killing and robbing and all of that shit. It's a message in every song, and every song you're gonna be able to visualize with your mind. You feel me? Every song you're gonna be able to see something, and you're gonna get something out of it. Stick to the script basically comes from staying in your lane and being yourself, because I feel like a lot of shit right now, a lot of shit that's going on, people only doing it because they see other motherfuckers doing it, you know what I'm saying? And I can't respect that as a man. But me, I just I just want to get everybody to get back to their own roots. Like as a person, as a man, whoever you are, be yourself. Stick to your script, stay in your lane. And that's where the name stick to the script from. So that's where it comes from. And um, like, you know what I'm saying? You can, like I said, you can, you can, you can, it's gonna be some street shit on there, but just because that's only because that's my best way of explaining it, how how I stick to my script and how I stay in my own lane to the people, you know what I'm saying? So that's you know what I'm saying? It's gonna be crazy though. So y'all stay tuned for that. It's gonna be, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a crazy project, you know? Man, I definitely agree, man. That's a cool message, man. We need to go back to being ourselves, man. A lot of people doing, like you said, shit just because the other motherfuckers is doing it following, man. Like you said, man, they need to go back to how it was on a real way. Not in a weird way back to how it was. Like, you know, some old niggas be like, they need to, nah, not like that, but I know what you mean. You feel me? I'm, I'm, I'm going to be rapping for the West Coast, you know what I'm saying? Because I feel like, I feel like down south and in the, in the East Coast, they killing it, you know what I'm saying? And then other people, like, you got people like YG and Kendrick Lamar problem like rj all these they going crazy you feel me but i feel like a lot of la artists is, or people from cali or people on the west coast they just game banging on tracks now you feel me it ain't nothing wrong with that because you're supposed to talk about where you come from and talk about why you talk about what you talk about you know what i'm saying people relate to that people understand that but i feel like people just got away from the culture of west coast music and i'm trying to low key bring that back that's why i listen to a lot of mozzie you know what i'm saying because i feel like mozzie he talk about a lot of you know what i'm saying shit that go on in the streets or whatever but I just, I'm just proud that he from SAC, you feel me? He bringing the West Coast back, you feel me? He bringing that gangster rap back, and that's where it started from. When you think about Ice Cube and Ice T and all of that shit, it started, that's how the West Coast started off, you feel me? So whether it's gangster rap, no matter what kind of rap it is, I'm just glad that the West is getting looked at again. You understand what I'm saying? Off top, man. I see you definitely tuned in with the Mozzie, man. I fuck with Mozzie too, man. One up top, man. Shout out Mozzie, man. Fuck with that nigga too. All right, so you know, um... You know, this has been a dope interview uh, so far, man. And, you know, my interviews is a little bit different with the questions, man. You, uh, you know, what kind of what kind of food you like? What's your favorite restaurant? Let your fans know. Oh, man, if you, if you talk to any of my people, I am the most pickiest eater. I don't eat cheese. I don't like ranch. Uh, I don't like no vegetables. Real shit. I love chili. Like, you feel me? You, you want to go eat? I'm going I'm to go P.F. Chains. I fuck with P.F. Chains heavy. I don't know if you heard of uh, Las Vegas Buffet in uh, at the Lama Mall. 
I've been eating that shit like every day for like two weeks. <laughs> I'ma check that out. And I, uh, my mama chicken tacos. I love chicken tacos. You see me? But as far as that, I'm a picky eater. Like you know what I'm saying? You just throw out anything, and I'll be like, that shit nasty. I don't want that shit. Like I don't like nothing. I like a little bit of shit. So you feel me? Whoever I marry, they gonna have it real easy with me, for real, for real, cause you ain't gotta cook shit. I love spaghetti too, I fuck some spaghetti. Yeah. Man, yeah, I'm on everything, but I'm a picky eater too, nigga. We damn near eat the same shit on every on everything. That's why I'm looking up like this nigga name everything I eat, right? On everything. Okay, so you know, um, you know, we was talking about Speedy a little earlier, and I don't know if he would be the one to give you the best advice, but uh, like, what's some of the best advice you've been ever given, man? Whether it was life, whether it was rapper, you know, some best advice. Uh, that gotta that gotta refer to. It's, I, I'm gonna say two of them really, right? Um, the first one would just be being yourself, sticking to the script. You understand me? Because, like I said previously, everything right now is so fabricated. You know what I'm saying? Everything is just it's just fake to me. Like I don't, I don't I don't listen to a lot of music. Like I be waiting for somebody to just drop. Like that's why like I feel like Mozzie Mozzie was really like like he was a savior to this shit because. So so much shit was just so fabricated, and I feel like when you do music, like you got niggas like Plies who get tested, and, every, and like everywhere you go, you got motherfuckers getting tested, and motherfuckers saying they fraud, or somebody drop a video saying something about some rapper because they ain't what they talk about in their music. You feel me? And I just feel like everything is so fabricated. So one is really sticking to the script and being who you are. Like you feel me? Not know, not letting nobody change you. Not letting money change you. A shorty or a female, I say shorty. Letting you know what I'm saying? Nothing. Letting nothing change you. You know what I'm saying? And another thing, um, my homie Speedy told me you might find this funny, but he told me never trust the hoe <laughs> on everything. Real shit, cause he he. Um, I, I, don't, I ain't gonna get into all of that, but never trust a female because you, like, I'm, I ain't gonna say that. I'm gonna say this. When I was little, right, my mom told me, uh, find who you, gonna, who you gonna be with when you young. And I know a lot of, uh, a lot of dudes might think that's stupid because your, your pops or men, grown men, they'll tell you, like, oh, you gotta, you know what I'm saying, be with different women, you know what I'm saying, have fun, you young, you a kid, have fun, you young. But my mama used to tell me to find who you gonna be with. While you young, she used to tell me that you was born to be a star. My mama used to tell me that you was born to be a star. And you never know who going to be with you for you or who with you for what you got. You know what I'm saying? So I, I, I say that was one of the realest things, you know what I'm saying, as, a, as far as advice. You know what I'm saying? Because you got to respect that. Like, you know what I'm saying? You don't want nobody just leeching. You don't like, motherfuckers don't like leeches, you know what I'm saying? Don't nobody like a leech that's just sucking on to whatever you got going on. You want a motherfucker that's really rocking with you. You want somebody that's solid. Everybody want to be around solid people, you feel me? So. Yeah, great advice from moms in a real way. Hey, man, well, you know, it's a lot going on in, in our city right now in L.A. Well, really in America, it's a lot going on. Shit, I just want to know, uh, you know, we got the presidential candidacy and, and everything coming up. What would you do if you could be president for a day? Like, I know it's a, I know a day is pretty short and, and it's not enough that's why you know I try to sum it down to like what's one thing that you would do if a day you just had that power to be president oh man <laughs> oh man if I could be president I ain't never thought about no shit like that man but if I could if I could be president for a day I don't know in, in, in whichever way that I could I just make sure people was well like you know what I'm saying whether it's black people, Mexicans, or white people, however it go, like, wherever, wherever people need a need, I will try my best to try to fill that need, like, you know what I'm saying? I know that seems kind of far-fetched because I can't go around the world and ask every single person, like, what do you need, what do you need help with? But I don't know, some way, somehow, I will try my best to try to make sure I can see a need and fill that need, you feel me? That's good. That's positive. I like that. I like that. That was actually a good answer, you know what I'm saying? Well, shit, let us know, uh, with that being a good answer, man, let us know, you know, what type of student were you, you know, coming up? What type of student was you? To be honest, I wasn't a bad student. I was an A-B student, you feel me? Now, my problem was, my problem was, I used to, I used to let that, like, I'd go to, school, I'd go to class and do my thing, but I'd be in the streets doing a whole nother thing, you know what I'm saying? And that was, like, the perfect disguise to me because, I ain't gonna say to me, I'm gonna say for me because... I was doing negative shit in the streets, you feel me, that my moms and pops didn't know about, but they wouldn't have never knew about it because I was getting straight A's and B's in school, you feel me? So 
I was an AB student. I was very focused on education because when I was in high school, actually, I had I was playing football and shit. I had scholarships and all of that, but I blew my knee. My uh, I, I broke my kneecap in half actually my 11th grade year, and I never I never attacked my therapy aggressively, so I didn't come back the same player as I should have been. You feel me? So after that, I was just kind of lost and I was just trying to figure everything out. You know what I'm saying? I got heavy in the streets or whatever. You know, my best friend got killed, and that's how I discovered music. But it's crazy because my dad my dad actually had a deal in the 90s. He had a deal in like like 90 I would say 96. My pops had a deal with Priority Records. I don't even know if you know who that is. So, but he had a deal with Priority Records or whatever. So it's always been in my roots. It's always been in my culture. I just never picked up on it. I always thought I would, I would be playing ball, but shit. I guess it's been there from the get go. I just never dug down and you know what I'm saying, trying to find it. So now it's coming out. You feel me? Man, when well, shit just talking to you as as far as this man, it sounded like you gonna be one of them ones, man. You gonna be you gonna be one of them ones to go, man. I'm talking about your your music. I heard was dope and the brain that you got, man. You you know you you not a dumb kid. You smart out here. I like that. All right. Um. Well, you know, like you just said, you used to play ball and everything in high school. Did you um you ever have any jobs before rap? Any uh any means of paper or anything for you spitting? Man, to be honest, no. I was like, I was just in the streets, you feel me? I was just, my, my homie Speedy, he used to be the one. That's why I was so shell-shocked when he passed away because he used to be the one, like, he was game making too or whatever, but he used to be the one that would tell me, like, man, stop fucking with the homies. And you got, I had a son, you feel me, around the time he passed away, my son was just born. Actually, when he passed away, my son was about six months, you know what I'm saying? He two now, but around that time, he used to just be like, man, you need to leave the homies alone, focus on your son, focus on your son, and do what you need to do for your son. And I was hard-headed little nigga. I used to, man, fuck all that. I'm in the hood, like, I'm doing this and I'm doing that. Like, everything else was irrelevant to me, so when it all came down to it, I just had to when, when he passed away. I just I just had to wise up, like. But it, it scared me so much because it was so close to home. You ever had that before? Like when something happened and you'd be like, whoa, right there. And then when he passed away, prior to he, they found him dead at five in the morning. I was with him till three that morning. So just imagine getting that call in the morning. You know what I'm saying? So you know it was just it, it was it was real real scary, man. It was scary, and uh, I just felt like I had to do something. I had to do something. And when I when I when I when I finally start doing music. I promise you, if my pops was here to tell you, I couldn't get out of this room, you feel me? And not because I was just so in tune with doing music, it was just because I was so scared of what was going on outside of this room, you know what I'm saying? But I, I, I grabbed the hole, like, you feel me, to myself, and I, and I figured everything out, so, you know? That's the best way I can answer that question. Off top. No, that's dope, that's dope, and I know Speedy proud of you right now, man, of the moves you making, I know he is, off top. You know, like I said previously, I, I was in the streets or whatever, and, and I only did it, I'm going to be I'm a be a man about it and say I was being a follower, you feel me? Because I seen everything and it looked it good to me. I seen I seen girls, you feel me? And they was out, they was having fun, they was with all the they was with the most turned up game banger. Like every turned up game banger had they had they had the most shorties, you feel me? That's just how it was. So I seen that, you feel me? And, and, and I wanted a piece of it, you feel me? Then I see people my age, like you feel me, like I ain't gonna say my older homies, but like, you know what I'm saying? They my homies, they my age. They're probably, I'm 22 years old, I just turned 22. So I see a couple of my homies, like to this day, to date, 23, 24, and they in Audis, they in Benz and Beamers and shit. And I seen that shit, I'm like, damn, they got all of this. Why well, I can't have that, you know what I'm saying? So I kind of followed in their footsteps thinking that it was going to be the same for me when it was a whole nother process, you know what I'm saying? So if I was to give advice to myself as a younger, I'd just be like, everything that glitters ain't gold is stick to my script, stay in my lane. That's why the 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 name of my album is so powerful because it's so it's, it goes beyond what it sounds. It goes beyond what you read on that cover. It goes beyond stick to the script because the meaning of stick to the script, you understand? Yeah. Easy call. Man, great answer, man. Great answer. All right, so um, you know, what um, out of your, your catalog that you got thus far, what you think? What's the what's the realest song you ever wrote? The realest song I ever wrote? I got a couple. You feel me? Um, I'm, for for one, I'm gonna go with Dead Homies um, off of my my first my first mixtape, Keep It 100. It's my intro. Whoever watching, y'all can go check that out. And then uh, the second song, matter of fact, it's my new intro. It's actually called Street Diary. You feel me? And it basically just touched down on um, being a real nigga. And what I mean by that is um, people do real shit or they try to do real shit because of what every 
what everybody else thinks or what they got to say. With me, I, I don't never say I'm a real nigga or y'all should fuck with me because I'm a real nigga. I do real nigga shit, you feel me? And I do it because I want to and not because of what everybody else is telling me to do or what they think about it. I do it because I want to. And that's what the song is talking about, you feel me? So I would say both of my intros my to my, from my, to my first mixtape, Keep It 100, Dead Homies, and then I'm finna drop Stick to the Script. Sometime soon, you feel me? And it's called Street Diary, both of my intros. Off top, off top man, yeah, y'all go check that, you go check that, uh, that dead homies out. I fuck with that, my nigga. And you know, before we get up out of here, man, I gotta hit you with this. Uh, you know, what's your what's your top five, man? Your top five in the game. My top five in the game. Um, I'm gonna go with Mozzie. Uh, not no, not in particular order, but I'm gonna go with Mozzie, um, Kevin Gates, Nipsey Hussle. Uh, believe it or not, I fuck with Young Thug. I fuck with Dirk, Lil Dirk. Um, and shit. I ain't there yet, but I'm about to so, man. Cause I feel like I got a lot to bring to the table, and once the people hear me, I don't feel like it's gonna be no turning back after that. You know what I'm saying? Easy call. Up up in there, that's right, my nigga. But there it is, y'all. Like once again, man, it's my boy Papa XO, and y'all know me. I'm Top Shelf Jock, and this refuse. Nah, what the fucking nigga me, bitch? I've been ballin', and been nobody cross the line, cause we all off it. We pillin' out up in this bitch, we get the crib walkin'. The whole spillers, cause them niggas, we really all turn up the party, hit it, pass the bottle. Turn up some more, you better grab somebody. I turn up the party, hit it. Pass the bottle. Turn up some more, you better grab somebody. I no question, choose the henny over all you bitches. After I'm faded, temptation making me call you bitches. I place my water, her pussy dripping like water, nigga. I place my water, her pussy fire. That's no lie. I'm with my niggas, you better relax.